Welcome to Affinity Designer. When your snapping settings include any of the object-based snapping options, those at the bottom of this pop-up panel, the role of candidates comes into play. Candidates are objects on a page or artboard which Designer identifies as being able to trigger snap behaviour. There are several ways in which Designer can identify candidates and this is controlled from the candidates pop-up menu. In this video, I'll discuss the options available from this menu, starting with the candidate list. To assist in my explanation, I'll also select this Show Snapping Candidates option, which will permanently display snapping candidates. Let's start with a blank page and using the rounded rectangle tool on the Tools panel, I'll draw a basic rounded square on the page using Shift Drag. Notice that currently this shape has no stroke applied Yet if I click away from the rectangle to deselect it, it shows a purple outline. This purple outline indicates that it's a snapping candidate. If I display the snapping options and switch off the show snapping candidates option, the purple outline will vanish. The rectangle is still a snapping candidate, it's just the indicator which has vanished. I'll switch it back on before we continue. Because the square is a snapping candidate, designer displays dynamic guides and I can align my next object to it like so. If I press the escape key to deselect the new shape, you can see it has also become a snapping candidate. This object has been added to the candidate list. I'll add a few more squares and they too are added to the candidate list, still indicated by the purple outline. Now, if I add a seventh shape, it again becomes a snapping candidate and is added to the list, but the first square has dropped from the list and no longer causes snapping. This is because the candidate list has an upper limit and this, as you can see from the snapping pop-up panel, is currently set to six. When you reach this upper limit, the oldest snapping candidate is removed from the list. So if I add an eighth square, the next oldest shape I drew drops from the list. If I increase the limit to say 9, no more candidates are lost until I reach that limit again. So newly created objects will automatically be added to the candidate list. However, there are ways of manually adding objects to the list. For example, what if I want to snap to this top left square once more? I can select it and it becomes the newest candidate in the list. Alternatively, you can hover the cursor over an object for a few seconds, and it will be added to the candidate list as the newest addition. If you have the Show Snapping Candidates option switched off, addition to the candidate list is indicated by briefly displaying a purple outline. As an aside, when selected or hovered over, a group is considered to be a single snapping candidate. One last thing before we move on. The candidate list setting works globally across your document and ignores layer structure. When this option is on, designer's only concern is which objects are part of the candidate list. For the other options, snapping candidates are determined by the layer structure of your document and the current selection you have in place. Here we have a document with two artboards, each containing blocks of colour, some grouped and others with text nested inside. I'll set the candidates pop-up menu to immediate layers and then select this object. Designer sets all objects to be snapping candidates which are at the same hierarchy level as my selection, i.e. all siblings become candidates. The parent also becomes a candidate. In this scenario, the blue rectangle can snap to the blue artboard, plus any of the blue rectangles, plus the boundary of the grouped white rectangles, but it cannot snap to individual white rectangles, text boundary boxes, or anything on the pink artboard. If I move down a level by selecting a text frame, I can align it to its containing parent rectangle, 
its sibling text, but not the artboard or any other content on the artboard. Next, I'll set the candidates pop-up menu to immediate layers and children. Snapping will act as before, but give you additional snapping candidates in the form of children of immediate or sibling layers. So in this scenario, this blue rectangle can now also snap to individual white rectangles and text frames, but still cannot snap to anything on the pink artboard. If I move down a level by selecting a text frame, there is no change in previous behavior, i.e. you still cannot snap to anything other than the parent or sibling objects. As for the final setting, if the candidates pop-up menu is set to all layers, every single object in your document becomes a snapping candidate. This means every object can be snapped to any other object, regardless of the position in the document or hierarchy. If your document is complex with hundreds of objects, I would not recommend using the all layers setting. This is because the sheer number of candidates might hinder rather than help with object placement and alignment. I think that pretty much covers everything about snapping candidates. If you'd like to find out more about snapping in general, please see our other video tutorials or our comprehensive help system available from the help menu. Thanks for watching.